In nature, trees that grow up in a windy environment become stronger. As winds whip around a young sapling, forces inside the tree do two things. First, they stimulate the roots to grow faster and spread farther. Second, the forces in the tree start creating cell structures that actually make the trunk and branches thicker and more flexible to the pressure of the wind. These stronger roots and branches protect the tree from winds that are sure to return. My young friends, the world will not glide calmly toward the second coming of the Savior. The scriptures declare that all things shall be in commotion, more concerning than the prophesied earthquakes and wars are the spiritual whirlwinds that can uproot you from your spiritual foundations and land your spirit in places you never imagined possible, sometimes without your hardly noticing that you have been moved. The worst whirlwinds are the temptations of the adversary. Sin always has been and always will be a part of this world. But it has never been so accessible, insatiable, and acceptable. There is, of course, a powerful force that will subdue the winds of sin. It is called repentance. How do you prepare for your whirlwinds? Remember, it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that you must build your foundation. Though when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, his shafts in the whirlwind, when all his hail and his mighty storm shall beat upon you, it shall have no power to drag you down because of the rock upon which ye are built. This is your safety in the whirlwind. Hello, sisters, and welcome to our August video. This video we just view illustrates when we stand by, when we stand firm and keep our focus on Christ, the fiery dart Satan throws at us will have no effect as we travel towards the tree of life. A few weeks before President Heber J. Grant died, he said, Oh God, bless me that I shall not lose my testimony and keep faithful to the end. For 27 years he was president of the church, and this is his prayer. Elder Pearson said in a conference talk, he said, President Grant's example reminds us that no one is immune to Satan's influence. And two of Satan's most powerful tools are distraction and deception. Enduring to the end is a hallmark of a true discipleship and is essential to eternal life. Enduring to the end helps to keep us from falling into Satan's trap of distraction and deception. And if we live a Christ-centered life, our reward is eternal life. So why is it so hard to, why do we struggle so much to be faithful with this, with this understanding? Sometimes we are caught between casual obedience and our own commitment that could weaken our faith and opens the way for Satan's tools to slowly creep into our lives and erode our faith. We can no longer be a casual spectator in God's church. And enduring to the end requires total commitment to the Savior. I love Lehi's dream of the vision of the tree of life. It was an amazing example of enduring to the end. And as we travel on the path towards this tree, there are many distractions and deceptions that will keep us from the love of God and all that it represents. One example of deception is searching the spacious building for false knowledge and that search will not lead us to the truth, because only our Savior has the words of eternal truth, or of the, the words of eternal life. When the Savior asked the disciples, if they will go away also, Simon Peter says, To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. This is one of my favorite scriptures, because I feel the same way. Where will I go? I know this is God's church. And I, want, and I want to be part of his plan of happiness. It takes commitment and constantly living a Christ-centered life to reach the tree, and sometimes it's not easy. So what are your distractions or deceptions? In a book by Hiram Smith titled, Your Eagle's Rest, I used many of the stories before. 
Um, Hiram talks about a time when he was a bishop and a young a young man asked him this question. Bishop, I want you to tell me why we go to church all the time. Why do we go to so many meetings? I go to seminary, Sunday school, sacrament, young men's activities, and I'm tired of it. You tell me, why do we go to these meetings? The bishop thought back to an experience he had many years before when he was a youth at, a, at a fireside. And that fireside had a real fire. The speaker stood up and said, I'm going to talk tonight about why we go to all the meetings that we go to. He walked to the fireplace and with a poker, he reached in and took out one glowing red hot coal and placed it on the hearth. He sat down, he folded his arms across his legs and watched the hot coal turn from bright red to a cold black coal. And after 20 minutes, he went over, picked up the coal with his bare hands and placed it back into the fireplace with all the other coals and soon it became red hot again. The speaker got up and he said, that's my talk, amen. Bishop Smith goes on to explain to the young man, you may not remember what you ate for dinner two weeks ago, but you do know the food sustained you and kept you alive. Same with attending church. We may not remember the talk that was given, but we do remember the spirit we felt at that time. Just sitting together, we feel each other's light. End of story. So praying, studying, doing Come Follow Me, having a church calling, attending church, paying tithing, giving service to others, are all ways that we can stoke our coal and keep it burning to help us stay on the path. When we are baptized and endowed in the temple, we made sacred covenants with God, and there is no going back. As we face our own personal struggles and trials, giving in and giving up are not options. Staying by the tree is the only option. Find out what that means to you and do whatever it takes to stay on that path towards that tree of life. I know from personal experiences how much my Heavenly Father loves me. He knows me and He wants me to live with Him again. It doesn't matter who you are, the prophet, a homeless person, or someone like you or me. Heavenly Father loves each one of us. And he wants the same. He wants us to live eternally with him again. With Christ, when Christ is the focus of our life, our coal will burn brightly, which will, which will make it easier to stay by the tree. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.